Hey, thanks for coming on the show, uh, Shannon and Darren. I really wanted to call you Sharon there for a second, mix the two names together. <laughs> <It'll work>. uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, thanks for being on the show, doing our little drive around while we do the interviews, um, and it's great to have you. Uh, and we were just talking about driving stick, so I think we should, uh, you know, props to driving stick, right? Like, yeah, uh, yeah I, I really miss it. Um, but we're in the electric Ford Mach E, right? And uh, yeah. you know. It, the electrics I don't think really work if you I you know have a stick. Yeah, right? it's it's like, I don't, yeah, know, I don't even know what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Magic <laughs> happens somehow. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So uh, what I want to talk to you about, of course, is uh, Acorn. What are you? You know, what are y'all up to uh, over there? Yeah. So we, we just released uh, Acorn. We just uh, publicly publicly announced it. What August? Yeah, just like a month or two ago. Yeah. 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 So Acorn is focused on the application experience on on Kubernetes, uh-huh. so basically making it easier for people to package up applications and run them on Kubernetes. So something the developers uh, can like and use, right? And uh, something the ops people can also like and run. So right. it's like trying to make both sides happy. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of the high level of Acorn. And so, so what does it do that makes it easier for developers? Yeah, I mean, so it's it starts with, from a developer perspective, it starts a lot more towards a Docker-like experience. Uh-huh. So um, we very much were big fans of Docker, um, yeah. kind of the original Docker from right. you know way back when. So it has more of like a Compose-like experience. So there's something called an Acorn file to describe yeah. your application. So it can do okay. a full microservice with you know volumes and secrets. and So you define the entire application. Gotcha. But then you can build that with Acorn into a single asset, like an OCI okay. artifact that gets pushed into a standard uh, registry. Yep. And then, so from there, once it's in a, it's a, it's a image basically. Uh-huh. Um, then you can just deploy that on any Kubernetes cluster, and then just run that on a Kubernetes cluster. Gotcha. And gotcha. So we have a little Acorn uh, operator that runs on the Kubernetes cluster to assist that. And is yeah. there like some? Is there like a registry or something, or like where do you where do you push it? So it just goes to any Docker registry. Okay. So we're using all the regular OCI Docker uh, technology. Uh-huh. So it's the standard uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the same way, like. Today you're building Docker images and pushing them to a registry. Mm-hmm. So now you build Acorn images for your application and then push those to a registry. And so your Acorn image actually includes like the application metadata right. plus all of the like it links in all of the Docker images. Yep. So it creates one big artifact that right. like, you can sign that uh, that you know defines your entire application. And then you can move that between like dev test prod, whatever, right. whatever you right. want. Yeah. So um What's uh, particularly funny about your story is, um, have you ever heard of an application or a, a project called Atomic App? A little bit. So I worked on that oh, in did? 2013. Oh, yeah. Uh, which did what you're describing. Um, <laughs> you know, probably not as well, right? Um, but uh, it was the same kind of concept as like what we, ours was slightly different in that um, what we wanted to do was more like, the the container that you pushed around uh-huh. was a description of the application uh-huh. and so then it would go and kind of get the pieces because we weren't sure we wanted the the big thing yeah. um and you know and and to be fair right like it never saw a customer like we you yeah. know we, so, we just kind of rolled you know we're building it and because we thought it was a problem in the space so one of the things that like, unique what we do is because we don't actually like copy in the docker images we're just mm-hmm. because a, an oci registry is really just a links to a yep. bunch of digests. Right. So right. we just link um, to the existing Docker image digest. But but if you do like kind of like a push or pull, since it's all linked together, it kind of appears as one asset. But like it's just this kind of this big tree of layers and manifests and right. indexes. Right. And so we, we we link it all together. Um, right. And so, so you can sign it, which is super Yeah, awesome. and then also right. like if you want to like, because a lot of times let's say you're moving to like an air-gapped environment or something, right. it's really easy to just pick up that one asset and because it looks like an asset even though it's all these links. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And yeah. then just like kind of push and pull that so you get your whole application so you don't have to deal with like, because that's what like, you know, you can do that already with the Helm chart. You can push that to a registry. Right. But it will not... Uh, it doesn't include all the Docker images, so then you have all these references to different images. Yeah, you have to go like follow. Yeah, and then those might be yeah. mutable tags, so things have changed. Right. But right. Um, but like one of the key things that we've done with Acorn is like, because um, there's been a lot of efforts to kind of address the developer experience on Kubernetes, mm-hmm. but we've like we're trying to embrace like the full power of Kubernetes, but present it in a way that the actual like developers, whoever's building the application does not need to know Kubernetes. Right. So we're not using like Kubernetes style YAML. We actually have kind of like our own markup um, language. Uh, you know, it looks a lot like a uh, Q or JSON it. Oh, okay. But it's so it's something like really tailored much towards like 
there's more abstracted concepts. Um, so it's like you just deal with kind of describing the application and then Acorn just makes it, turns it on to all the Kubernetes stuff. Right. So we're not like, you're not going to see like, you know, Kubernetes manifests and stuff in, in our, uh, our, in, in your descriptions. Or yeah. So does it, does it feel more like, I mean, I think so part of the appeal of a Docker file, right, was that it's basically bash, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and that's, and so it's like, we mimicked it. It's like very, very, so we have the, the, um, the Acorn file is like, it's, the level of abstraction is very similar to Docker Compose. Okay. Yeah. So it's like you're just defining some some containers with image and arguments, and those use some volumes yep. and, and secrets. But like under the hood, it's using all the, you know, it's like the real deployments yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. Right. and you know, and PVCs and all the you know ingress and services. And so we just wire up everything kind of like best practices. Yeah. While just kind of respecting the the kind of the intent of what the Acorn file like the way they describe the application. Right, right, yeah. okay. It's and pretty, do you it's are, a, oh, I was gonna say, it's a pretty high bar. I mean, if you think about like though, you know, I mean, Kubernetes works great, Helm works great. It's yeah. not like people can't do everything. Yeah. Our whole principle is, okay, can we make this way easier? Can right. we make this way easier for a lot more people? And, um, you know, and at the same time, we, it's like, how do you avoid all the mistakes of all the paths that have come before? Because yeah. at some level, that's what we're building, right? right. It's a new right. path, it's another right. layer of abstraction that, you know, takes away Kubernetes. And that's typically been, really hard to get right. right uh, I mean, you've right. got Heroku's and, and Cloud Foundries and even early open shifts and stuff that yeah. were very, you know, pazzy. And for the most part, you know, we saw most people migra migrating towards just, no, just give me Kubernetes. Give me, right. you know, give right. me native Kubernetes, give me Helm. But nowadays when you go, you know, we were at Rancher for eight years and working with so many of these companies that had built Kubernetes, were managing Kubernetes in the cloud, had yeah. Kubernetes everywhere. They're, you know, the platform teams were building these massive effectively platform as a service themselves, right? right? Helm right. templates right. and scanning and yeah. GitOps and all this stuff. And everyone was a snowflake. Everyone was yep. heavily maintained. So I think our, our inspiration was what if we did an open source project that anybody could use that, that sort of simplified that whole process and was continuously being maintained and just got better and better yeah, yeah. over time. And yeah, so, I mean, it, in a lot of ways, right? It's, um, I mean, it's kind of like the beauty of like Ansible, right? It's like, it's the, it, it, it feels in the same way is that like, we're not, you know, versus like Puppet and Chef is like, we're not saying, um, you can't get down and dirty and do whatever it is you actually need to do, you know, because you've got some bizarre use case. Um, but if we give you a framework to put it in, maybe the overall infrastructure will be a lot cleaner. Well, and the administration, right? I mean, what, we, right what we found right. is like just upgrading clusters, you know, people are so afraid of what is in there. Yeah. And right. whether it's, and, and that was, I think, one of the things Darren really got right, and we've been getting really good feedback on just the sort of secure by design architecture of Acorn. Uh -huh. Like, okay, you know, let's make secrets super easy so that everybody's going to use them in exactly the right way. Right. Let's, you know, not allow privileged containers. Let's, you know, automatically allocate namespaces and just really um, just, just think about the best practices and build those again into a way that, you know, I mean, we've been supporting thousands and thousands of Kubernetes clusters and it just is like, well, if people just wrote their apps like this, it'd be a lot easier for right. us as operators. Right. And I think that's what we we're trying to get right with Acorn was. Well, I think it's one of those things too, where it's like, I, I still don't really understand why Pazas didn't stick around because like, I think there's there's a, a tendency amongst engineers, right? To think that their their thing is somehow special oh, yeah, and, yeah. and to <laughs> then therefore, you know, avoid um, things that ha feel like they have lock-in, like a pass, yeah. right? Um, so I think maybe you're kind of hitting that that you know sweet middle ground where it's like they feel like they can be a special snowflake, but because they're probably not actually going to be, you can actually you know capitalize on similarity of infrastructure and deployment. That's it. You nailed it because it really is that part where people are so afraid that something cool is going to come along later that right. they're not going right. to be able to use. And yeah. right. I think nowadays though, what's interesting is when we're thinking about where Acorn's going the cloud services are going to probably be the most important part of that because everyone wants access to, you know, these cloud data services, right? right the different right. types of, whether it's for machine learning or it's just a back end, you know, Mongo, they want Atlas, right? They mm -hmm. want access to these services. And, you know, I think it's going to be less and less important, you know, like as a platform, I don't think we'll be doing data services the way that Cloud Foundry did. Yeah. We'll be doing data services where we just assume that you're using cloud-based data services if you right. don't want to right. deploy, yeah. you know, you know, it's like you can choose to use the Mongo image and bring up a Mongo server, 
but you're probably just going to use you know certainly more and more we expect people to use cloud-based databases well, and so it's yeah it's really yeah. interesting with my students is that um, you know because they're you know they're taking computer science degree um, and in a lot of ways it's it's very traditional and um, you know and so me and so we do all these projects for like third parties um, and you know and so both the third party oh, squirrel, squirrel trying to die this time. <laughs> uh, I've almost killed a seagull and a couple of geese uh, please do not kill a squirrel with us in the crowd right, yes, I haven't, I haven't actually done us. anything bad bad uh, branding yeah. yes um, so uh but yeah, in getting getting the look, so the the client will present a well. I, ha, I basically want to make a website, right? Yeah. And getting them to try to maybe think a little bit outside of the box, for lack of a better term. But it's like, no, this one system, for example, it's a message banking for ALS patients, right? Um, or or vaguely like that. Um, and uh, and I'm like, no, what this can be is a serverless function that you upload these audio files, and then you know basically there's a pipeline of where we can like interject audio editing of various sorts we can either use a human you know in the mix right where we have an actual audio engineer or we can go out to some service you know but kind of getting them to wrap their head around you know essentially cloud native development right yeah. um, or even event driven architectures when what they think of is this very serial or sequential development style is really difficult um you know and but i you know for me at least you know i think what you're kind of describing like that's that is what we're going to be doing for all development in yeah. the future right it's like i'm going to write my one little bit it, turn it into a serverless function and it's going to get all of its data services all of its file storage everything else from somewhere else you know and you know magic happens here i don't yeah. know and I think when you imagine that future, though, you kind of realize, oh, yeah, the, of course, you know, we're not going to have the same types of paths as we had in the past. Right, to, re right. to do this right, you've got to kind of reimagine the whole thing. And yeah. it's, a, it's a high bar. It's something that, you know, you're going to have to actually appeal to users. So we're, we're right. just in that. Right now, we're kind of in the alpha phase of Acorn. We haven't pushed out. We're just demoing here at KubeCon for the first time oh, okay. you know, a cloud service yeah. that yeah. ties <laughs> the Acorn experience to all the infrastructure stuff that right. hopefully will grow into what we, we build and we'll be able to start sharing with people. But so, I was curious, have you seen a project called, um, uh, the, the nickname is Sochi, but it's uh, uh, Streaming OCI? Uh, I was just talking to Chris Short. He was one of my earlier interviews. He was talking about this project that um, they uh, contributed to CNCF as Amazon, but it does... Um, it streams the layer getting of containers, which oh. I think might be really appealing to the the, the delivery system for. Oh yeah, for so it's yeah, that's like a, it's a newer version of like the the snapshot or the e star or whatever. Yeah, yeah but yeah, basically yeah. it's like kind of in the background and yeah, load yeah, yeah. all the layers rather than kind of having to get yeah, them all at once. Yeah, that's some really cool work. Yeah, um, but it seems like it might be really appropriate that you can kind of you know if, then you can kind of get piecemeal and then if, especially if you end up with an environment that is very PaaS like you know you have your PHP and your Python backends or whatever mm -hmm. but then if they have a shared sense of those acorn files uh, you know or a lot of it right then you can just you could also take advantage of the infrastructure optimization I don't know I just think it'd be kind of cool no. but it is I mean a lot of it right now it's these cloud services too that are getting into you know when we start to get requirements from people a lot of them are about you know look everyone's got OpenShift or Rancher, and they've got all their cloud, they've got all sorts of Kubernetes, and they've done a lot, I mean, they've just done so much work, like so much work on OPA, so much work yeah. on yeah. Helm, so much work on on building around it, that I think that's going to be one of the big, you know, why I say the bar is so high, it's like, can you, can you actually... You know, give enough value to replace yeah, all that yeah, work. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like, wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, that sounds interesting, but you know, how much am I? You know, I've already got this thing sort of working. So yeah, I mean, I had a very similar experience when I was working at Red Hat, right? Because I would go to customers and see the massive infrastructure they had built to build RPMs. Yeah, um, yeah. and I was like, you know, there's this open source project over here that does this already. You could yeah. have just used that one. And uh, and you know, when I when I wasn't being facetious, um, I would you know they would explain, oh no no, we needed to do this weird thing over here or we had this little part over there and you know the the system that builds rpms for red hat which is the same one as the open source one right it was way, written way back in the day and it was really custom to what red hat needed right um and so yeah i think i think what you're trying to do is really interesting but also i totally recognize it like super difficult yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, that's always what we try to do it's yeah, always exactly. something exactly. <laughs> one yeah. of the things about like has that's always been you know kind of the restrictive nature of the you know it's it's great you can just push some source code and it builds and goes to production mm -hmm. um 
but it's like everyone has a slightly different flow in how they do CI and CD. There's yeah. different yeah. points they need to inject. They do this. That. So it's like, you know, with Acorn, we were fo basically what we fo focused on is the easy way to basically build an asset. And then once you have that asset, you can easily move it around and deploy it. Mm -hmm. So you can really customize the CI and CD flow. Yeah. Because those things, you know, it's like CI, for example, is GitHub Actions, you know. Right. Like, that's right. just taking off like crazy. So it's like, well, that's a pretty good tool. Like, you know, people are using that. You know, there's no reason to replace that and have to be stuck into, like, our specific view of how CI is supposed to be done. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's like, the truth a lot, a lot of levels, too. Because, like, you really think about, you know, to build Cloud Foundry, the team had to go build Bosch, right? Like, they had to build basically Kubernetes. They had to do right. a, they yeah. had to build right. all of they Kubernetes did, right? and then all of a platform on top of Kubernetes. And it's yeah. the same for Heroku. They had to build right. all of that. Yeah. It's one yeah. of the reasons. Open like, shift. Yeah, That's it's, like, it's like, exactly. It's like, to do it, it, you had to be experts at infrastructure and expert at development. And it's kind of cool to do it right now because we don't have to think about infrastructure. It's like, we don't even really have to think about dealing yeah. with on-prem so, infrastructure. There's so many ways so to get it. The beautiful thing, like, so with Acorn, it's like, we're just focusing on, it's like, how do we take all of the Kubernetes ecosystem, like, all these amazing things that are already there and just basically put that together in a nice like make it very accessible to people make it right. very easy for the developer make it very easy for operations so it's like things like it's like oh you want progressive delivery it's like yep. acorn we don't have to do, you know do progressive delivery i mean it's like that already exists flagger you can pick up some yep. run yep. it's like everything it's like the ecosystem is so rich it's like so it's like we just need to plug into that we're just basically trying to you know it's like we have all this functionality, but people just struggle today in leveraging all of that. You know, so it's like just make it easier, bring it all together. So, so actually, kind of on that note, like one of the challenges I think in working as an engineer, a developer in the open source world, is knowing which projects I should invest in, yeah. right? Because you know, there's often a comp you know competition going on. You know, should I invest in Mesos or Kubernetes, right? Yeah, yeah um, way back when. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, and so do you ha because. As far as I'm concerned, part of providing a better developer experience is how do you recommend stuff, or do you yeah. recommend stuff uh, as part of Acorn? Yeah, so that that's, so that's the idea of like so with the Acorn and the Acorn files, we're trying to abstract the actual you know so you're just describing the application and yep. higher level concepts. So then at runtime, at like implement like when we actually deploy the application, we can make those choices. So mm -hmm. it's like Acorn, we have a default set of technology. Okay. But, but we are not looking to like prescribe you have to use this. You know, right, so it's like right. we'll be doing like service mesh integration. So if you want Linkerd versus Istio, that's that's fine. They both, you know, provide. But the user shouldn't know. Yeah, like, right. If I'm a right. user, like, I shouldn't know whether I'm I've got Linkerd or Istio. Right. I, right. As long as the, you know, the, the end output function is there and yep. what I need from that service mesh. You know, it's, it's more like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's auto scaling yeah. or it's blue green yeah. or whatever it right. is, canary. You know, I have a, 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 a structure that I'm looking for. Right? So we want to implement those structures. And that's why, the, I mean, it's like, you know, this is opinionated by its core. It's right. like, if we're not opinionated, we're really going to be just making the same mistakes, I think, is we're just going to create another thing on top of Kubernetes yeah. that doesn't yeah. add any value. Yeah, yeah. And you, so, you think of uh, XKCD's, uh, uh, you know, yet another, yeah, yet another uh, one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever it is. And that's, yeah, not that's, policy, that's, but yeah. Yeah, it's like, protocol. And, and, you know, people have tried, you know, there's so many people have tried this application layer of trying to get it right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the bar's hard. It, yeah, know, yeah. We'll see. Well, I, but I do like, I mean, I will say, you know, I really appreciate getting things that are opinionated um, and working with things that are opinionated as long as, you know, if I can figure out how it's like well documented about how I can kind of do something slightly different, you know, where yeah. you, where I can't, for whatever reason, agree with your opinion. And this, so. that's the great thing. So it's like by, by us, because like when we built Acorn, it's like, so the, the user experience is really through a CLI and it looks a lot like kind of Docker, like run and build yeah. and, um, but under the hood, it's 100% Kubernetes architecture, completely mm -hmm. following all the best practices, how you build things. So the nice thing is, is that, you know, we can make it work automatically, but for all of those corner cases where enterprise yeah. is like, no, I need to do this, I need to do that, right. or whatever. It's like, it's Kubernetes. You can still plug in under the hood. But again, that's all on the kind of the operation side, right. the infrastructure. It's all, you know, that's an implementation detail of, you know. Well, and, and particularly what, you know, like you haven't really mentioned it, but it should be obvious, right? Which is that um, when I have a change in my operational environment, I also don't need to hassle the developers, right? Yeah. Um, you, can, you can just go and, oh, we've decided we want to go with this other route for this part of the product, you know, platform, so we can just change that and, and kind of redeploy, right? Yeah. Um, and and our, so, our guess is, I think, over time, that those will become less and less. Actually, like I think, right? Like right. the probably the there will be winners. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Well, and also I think the analogy in our head is we're trying to build something more like GitHub than like 
you know, a, a, a sort of a, a deployment platform or framework. Right. Like we want right. something that's like, this is just a really, really easy way. If you use it, you don't have to think about any of that stuff. Right. And, you know, hopefully it appeals to really, really micro users. Like, we, well, it's you, like, I'd like someone who's one of your students to be able to come in there and be like, oh, this yep, is sweet. I, up, right. Just I mean, boom, run, right, deploy. Right. It, you know, I pointed at my EKS environment or my well, digital Well, you're in that really weird, I think it's a really weird kind of marketing position, which in some ways RHEL also had, right, which is that, like, your target audience is developers, but you have to make sure it, the operators are not afraid of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. And I think that's that's a really you know that's a really tough spot yeah. uh, to to get right. Um, and one I, of the but, good. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that's an area where our experience at Rancher helps so much. Is yeah. like yeah, right. having built for for enter, for so many enterprise Kubernetes platforms, we kind of know what they need and what they don't need and what they care about. So right. Right. It, it helps a little bit having that background. Yeah. Right. But not you know these days, I really think more and more we're going to be deploying against you know, cloud-based Kubernetes. Like that's right, what's right. going to be the vast majority of the back ends. Yeah. And it yeah. makes you realize you're like, okay, if everything is, you know, if, if we're going to see 80% of the workloads running on, you know, GKE, EKS, AKS, digital, you know, anyone's hosted Kubernetes service, then, you know, really, I wonder how much their opinions are going to shape this as well as yeah. they make choices and they be, make set defaults. I think that will certainly be one of the key influences on the directions we take because yeah, that's what we're saying. it's like for a lot of these things I don't so much see that there's going to necessarily be like a winner in the technology but it's like right. if you're an AWS you're going to be using their storage their networking their right, mesh right, capability right, their right. security scan or whatever if you're in Google you know so it's like a lot of these things are just going to be tailored to the environment whatever makes sense if you're on prem and using OpenShift it's going to be all open you know, Red Hat technology. Yeah, so. I, like I don't know if it's a if it's term yet, but if you, I really feel like it should be, which is essentially cloud locked. Um, you know, because you really do kind of get locked into those uh, the various clouds because of the services they offer based, and you kind of make that initial decision. But, yeah, but, 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 but I mean, I don't like. I, th I think that you're still with Kubernetes getting the. That's the kicker, the, right? Because it's like, well, yeah, here I use their version of all this stuff, but it's still a standard that approach. I can port. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah so yeah. it's like because we see that because it's like when we were doing you know k3s and stuff on the edge it was like people love the idea of like i can use a kubernetes like i i can develop as though i'm running it on the cloud but it's going to the edge because it's just kubernetes there right even right. though it's like my application is obviously not portable from the edge to the cloud like i'm not going to do that it didn't make any sense but like it's the same approach across you know different yeah. teams or within a company and it's just like linux sort of taking over the world i think now we're in the stage where kubernetes taking over right and it yeah. becomes right. this ubiquitous backwind it doesn't matter if you're in china and you're working on Ali cloud or you're you right. know in the u.s and you're working on aws i mean everywhere you go you're going to get kubernetes yeah and everybody's going to have more or less the same core capabilities and i think the nice thing is you know when we look at it, we're like well if we go somewhere and they don't have a good service mesh option we'll bring our own mm -hmm. right if they do yeah. we'll we'll use theirs and so I think it'll be more, the hardest part for us will be supporting back ends, right? It'll be like, okay, this is right. you know, putting the work into like support, really support it too, because we could try to do lowest common denominator, but that's never going to really fly. Right. got to right. get in there and just really make the experience on a cloud provider fantastic. And if we get enough traction, you know, hopefully they'll help us. But yeah, yeah. initially, and, and it's, right. it's like all the, on you. It's right. like those things like lowest common, like those solutions never work or whatever. And so it's like the, it's like with Acorn, what we're really trying to do is separate into like application concerns worth this versus uh, yeah. like operations and infrastructure. And right. what you find so much of Kubernetes right now of the kind of the ecosystem, it's it's very oriented towards operations. Oh yeah, totally. All the yeah. technologies like the storage and networking and security and all the stuff. It, that's all like from a developer perspective. Yeah, like that's whatever. just a crap yeah. where it's like, well, that should just run. <laughs> right, like I right, don't want anything right. like to just run, you know? I'm not involved in that part. Yeah, of the yeah. So it's like, you know, leave Kubernetes to the, to the you know, the operations people understand it and then, yeah. you know, leave the, the app and the, you know, that to the, the app teams. Well, and, so, and I think that's, uh, I mean, to be honest, right? I, mean, I think it's been one of the really good things about Kubernetes is that it's kind of enforcing that separation you're talking yeah. about. It's really starting to make it real. Like, I, I don't know if either of you remember Delta Cloud. Um, which I had such high hopes for, but it was basically this this library that would let you talk to any of the clouds at the time, which was basically AWS and mm. uh, oh, that was like LibCloud and the yeah, RJ, like RJ. way back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is like OpenStack days, yeah, like, before yeah. that, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was okay. um, part of it was to support OpenStack um, so that people could bridge from Amazon to yeah. OpenStack. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I think that I was part of its now. original mission, but uh, but it didn't do a very good job. It did the lowest common denominator model, right? Which I think is why it never yeah. really took off. 
because of that, you got to separate those two sets of concerns. And that's what we saw, like with the open the open stack. That was the, kind of a, a major flaw across the board with the open stack was that they were trying to abstract in, like every vendor who wanted to differentiate. They're doing the lowest common denominator, yeah. and that's what like so. That's the kind of the beauty. It's like. Kubernetes is just the architecture is so good mm -hmm. that like everyone's been able to kind of come in and do their differentiated features and whatnot, but all still playing within the same space, like right. the same ecosystem. And so you know, yeah, it's like that. This is why. So, so it's like we're not looking to you know kind of abstract that and do lowest common denominator. It's like no, you you take advantage of the you know if you have this super great networking or you know AI system or something like that. You take advantage of it, and Kubernetes allows it. Right. Yeah. No. That's it's really very cool. Um, I will definitely be checking it out. Um, yeah. Like I, I kind of heard the name of the you know the company and what you were trying to do, but it's really been interesting. Yeah, to hear especially about for the story. like for for education, like yeah. uh, you know that because I've seen you know like how quickly um, like college students stuff can pick up with like Docker and get mm -hmm. you know it's like since it has a similar user user experience and everything, you know you can install you know Docker Desktop and then be running an Acorn app right away. Right. Um, right. So it's like it's pretty. It's as simple. It's as simple to get going as like Docker Compose. Right. Right. But, but it's the the big difference between like what we're doing with Acorn and say with Docker Compose is like you we're still there's no intermediary step. Yeah, we're or, we're connecting you still to the full Kubernetes ecosystem. That thing you can you know you don't have to switch to a different tech stack to then put it into production. Right. Right. Like this is the same thing you can do on your on your laptop. The same thing can run you know, right. out in the cloud. Which is, as you know, if you've ever done any real production apps, it's a very nice thing. Oh, yeah, to yeah. And we know. Oh. I mean, it's like, so you switch to Helm, and then, you know, then you're doing Go templating, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, well, at least part of it, too, for me is like um, you do the deployment type development work so rarely that you like have to relearn it every single time you do it. Uh -huh. You know, it's like every time I want to stand up an Apache and put a new web server in there, right? I have to re remember how and figure yeah. out how to like rewrite the config files to get it to work. Because, you know, you just don't do it often enough yeah. to, to that, memorize that's what, it. That's, 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 that's always, how it's going to be for most people with Kubernetes, right? right? It's like, if you're on an, we were talking, I was talking something the other day and there were, were like five person team of which two of the people were just working on the Kubernetes deployment element. Bits. The other yeah. three yeah. were doing the application. You're like, right. Is that the overhead? Is it forty percent right. overhead? Is what we yeah. kind of cost right now <laughs> for right. for your sort of like? Well, I mean, I have the problem, right? Yeah. Because I mean, you know, like I, you know, I teach most of the time, but I, you know, I fool around developing, you know, various bits, you know, and I want to go and I've been messing with Tecton for one of the learning paths for Cube by example, and you know, and it's like I have to relearn all this stuff, yeah. and you know, and it's a whole different style of you know, even pattern of development, right? Because it's the you know the more the promise style of development, and you know, so it's like completely different. Um, so yeah, I totally, yeah. I really and appreciate that, that sort of thing. You know, it's like when we talk about like um, computer uh, languages, there's like something that's simple like C where you can keep the whole language in your head yeah, right, versus right. like C++ where it's like, you know, it's this large, you know, it's kind of like Kubernetes is a lot more like a C++. It's like you can't possibly memorize all of the things. That uh -huh. get. So it's like me. I, mean, what, I, I compare it to Python. Let's not, yeah, say, let's not yeah, talk yeah, about C++. We will, <laughs> we will have to go as far as C++. <laughs> well, also, do you really want to be labeled as like C++ <laughs> yeah, ever? Exactly. Right? Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, so but Python is just as big. Yeah, well, well I, I used to compare it to Java a lot. Oh, like, yeah, that, yeah. that would really yeah, upset yeah, people. Yeah, right, right. Um, but, but, so, but the thing is, because like I've been using Kubernetes, you know, obviously day in, day out for the last what, whatever long it's been around, yeah. Um, I still cannot from scratch write like a de like a deployment, or I could not right, actually right. like okay, I'm going to set up like a deployment with a config map and a service. Um, I couldn't do that from scratch. Like I like I got to find some template or right, something like right. that. Yeah, yeah. I I completely agree. <coughs> yeah. um, um, although to be fair, right? I mean, like for the vast majority of almost anything I do that's related to like programming or whatever, I almost always start yeah. with something else and then like <laughs> that's hack it until it's right. Yeah. But that was one of the things I always liked about um, like Docker and Docker Compose was like the it was simple enough that for the most part like you after could just, you yeah you could yeah. memorize it pretty quickly right and it was it was pretty straightforward and and it was quick to look up the the weird ones that you yeah, need yeah. occasionally yeah there wasn't really although a... I still would like someone to clearly explain to me the difference between CMD and entry point um, <laughs> but you know like yeah, we're gonna... I get it but I don't get it <laughs> um, yeah so. I don't know. Uh, so what else? Uh, what are you? What are you uh, doing at KubeCon? I mean, so you said you're demoing, uh, you know, an early version of the product. Yep. Um, are you giving any talks? Are you doing stuff like that? 
We're no, we're we kind of were the last ones in. I mean, we, yeah. we booked yeah. a sponsor. We were like, all right, we should go to Coupon about a month and a half ago, yeah. Yeah, which is never much. a good idea. <laughs> right. So right. to yeah. find us, you just got to walk and walk, right. Right. walk right. and walk well, all the way at the back. Go, just keep looking. Yeah. Yeah. The, the you see a janitor, you went a little too far, but not right. much too far. Right. Right. We know, we know if you find us, you're really interested, right. Yeah. Right. dedicated, right. you know. Yeah. And, well, uh, and and the development team loves you with this. Oh yeah, by the way, you have a brand new deadline because you have to go and show it at a show. Oh yeah, ready. Of course, of course. Oh, Darren That's never, never, we... never, never fails to deliver. I never yeah. even worry. <laughs> right. uh, I was actually giving a talk of, uh, you know, kind of demoing something or whatever, and my, like, entire dev, dev team was, like, in the audience. And, uh... And I was like trying to like demonstrate something. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Cause like, you know, you always get flustered on stage and yeah. you know, you figure you mistype something or whatever. Yeah, no, it turns out there was a bug. They fixed the <laughs> bug while I was on stage. And so when I went back to it later on, it worked. And so I, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, am I User losing error. my mind? Didn't I do exactly the same thing before? It was really very funny. Uh, yeah. Speaking of always being on time. Yeah. yeah, man. Well, we've had our experiences. Darren and I have been hosting meetups online for like, I don't know, eight years together. <laughs> and I would say, you know, everyone, the only rule is we always do live demos and we always show real technology. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what our batting average is, but we would not be hired. Right, like we, right. we'd, be like, we'd be like, we'd be like double A at best. We're yes. like, never we'd be the majors. These well, things break so, all the time. You know what's yeah. so interesting about that though is that, um, like, so this is kind of gets at why. So we started this Twitch channel right, right around the pandemic, um, and programming on Twitch has been kind of growing in popularity. Mm -hmm. And and my theory is is that because one of the hardest or one of the things you get from experience right is how to like approach debugging like how to approach fixing a problem um and when you don't have any idea uh you know what do you do right and uh so i think when you're watching somebody who's live programming and they and they're an expert right and they run into some problem i think what's really interesting for the viewers especially a junior developer is like how they approach fixing it and you yeah. can watch them do it live. And so I bet there was actually a lot of people who appreciated when you're <laughs> Oh out. yeah, we yeah. get we get lots of love. Yeah. We, like you get super stressed. Yeah. The best yeah. ones are they're like, yeah. no, 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 you just misspelled that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I get that in class all yeah. the time because I live you, code you, in class. Did, so well, sometimes yeah. I'll just stop. I'm like, did anyone see? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 What did I do wrong? What? Why is this yeah. it's worked in like a hundred times out of a hundred? Yeah. Yeah, I basically do that every lecture. So yes, I know exactly. It's the best though. I think people doing this is so valuable. Like it's also when somebody who's really good at this has been doing it for a long time screws up over and over again it makes everyone feel like, like wow yeah. he's really not that good or or well, maybe we all just suck right, right we're doing. exactly which is probably more yeah. likely the case if you ever need a boost of confidence just yeah. watch my demos yeah. Yeah. Go, <laughs> so bad it will definitely make you really nervous to use any product he's built yeah. but you know but really go try acorn it's, yeah. it's, it's great. great it's really yeah. great yeah. Yeah. it's so easy right. it works on the eighth try <laughs> at least every, every eighth try yes it's got it's consistent yes it's alpha We'll, right, we'll right. fix it in beta. <laughs> right. Well, uh, thanks so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it was um, fun. And, uh, thanks for having us. It's great. We had a nice little tour of, uh, yeah. of the town. Yeah, a little, little um, bit of Detroit. Almost killed yeah. a squirrel. Yeah. Almost yeah. killed a squirrel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> didn't actually do it, though. Um, yes. Like I said, my, uh, my ratio is pretty good. No um, animals harmed in the taping <laughs> yeah, of this exactly. production. <laughs> exactly. We think we might need that as a tagline because yeah. the number of times I've had geese meandering across <laughs> in front of me.